going to leave consigned now. I passed out for like four hours. Even after I woke up this morning. Oh, good grief. Where is the horrible smell of carrion coming from? Wisteria is in full bloom. I oh, want more games like this. Oh, I can't do it. So slowly. Why are we so incredibly slow? Peace, Carmichael. Charlotte. But smell of carrion coming from. <sighs> I would like to congratulate Clark Gardener. What symmetry! This fountain makes a very relaxing sound. Yay. Oh, what's that? Charlotte, hush. Gardener does not follow the alignment. There, that's better. It is symmetrical. Brown pellets. <laughs> Revolting. 
Run. There, that's better. I'm not able to find out what it is though. Maybe there's multiple ways outside. What if it turns out that Lady Clark's name is actually Dahlia Clark? That would make it to where, well, what is the... That put her pretty high on his list of murder. And that would not be good. Usually, at certain distance, aren't actually examine things. So maybe if we get close, we're gonna examine. Yeah, I had a feeling. It was probably the gardener who lit this fire. <laughs> Look here. I wonder if someone wanted to get rid of these papers. This subject would probably be useful to me. Try and get our brain cells to work. Why did Thor leave personal blinding wings? Doesn't 
not want to be accused of that. Everything that Thor Grey has left behind comes from Sir Carmichael's collection. He most probably gave them to her. But he chose to leave them here rather than run the risk of being accused of theft. It is understandable when you know just how much Lady Clark mistrusts her. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Never considered poisoning Lady Clark. Thor Grey had no reason to kill someone who only had a few months left to live. <laughs> the poison she ordered was for rats. The gardener must have made good use of it, considering the stinking remains on the path not far from the property. <laughs> I've finished here. I must put the skeleton key back and inform Hastings that I'm returning to London. Let's talk to Thor Grey about the stranger she was communicating with. Finished with this subject. Oh, right, the cue is in here. April nineteen. April nine. Perfect. Nothing else is keeping me here. Hello, Hastings. I have finished in Shelston. I will take the first train. Tell me, do you know how to restore writing on a burned document? Yes. You just have to soak a cloth with a hydrochloric acid solution and rub the sheet of paper. Then the characters appear. Bien. You have been of great assistance, Hastings. Could you please order the solution as soon as possible? Of course, but what documents do you want to read? You will see, my friend. Accessoire. If we have to manually put together the entire letter, oh no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do well. Donald Fraser is here. He insisted on waiting to see you. We know that Donald Frazier is not a man. Is we already know that Donald Frazier isn't the killer. This man is tired. Donald is short of sleep, and it looks as if he didn't even bother to undress before going to bed. Let's chat. Mr. Padova, I don't know why I'm here. to talk, and you came to find the only man capable of hearing you. Mr. Prado, since Betty's death, I've doubts about myself. I don't know what to do. And I keep having a horrible dream three nights in a row.
Have a drink and tell me about this dream. It's always the same. I'm on the beach with Betty. I grab her round the throat and I squeeze and squeeze until she's dead. Her head falls back and I see that it's no longer Betty. It's Megan's face. Have you seen Megan Barnard recently? Yes, our grief has brought us together. I never really knew her before. She's really quite a remarkable girl. But I would never tell her about my dream. Why not? Is it her you are attacking in your dream? No, it's Betty. And once Betty is dead, it's Megan's face that appears in its place. Megan's next run. Very interesting. Now try and get our brain cells to work. <laughs> Donald the starting to have feelings for Megan and feels guilty about it. Mr. Fraser, I think that the real meaning of this dream is that you are in love with Megan Barnard. Please go on. Do. This dream certainly betrays your guilt. Oh. But what do you feel guilty about? Having killed your fiancé? Possible. Or forgetting her very quickly for her sister? Certainly. And this forgetting is perceived as a second death. So you don't really think I was the one who killed Betty? I do not exclude this theory. I am simply saying that I do not need to know that fact to explain your dream and your guilt. Thank you for being frank, Mr. Poirot. You've helped me a great deal. I'm going back to Bexhill. I'll not take any more of your time up. It is late, Mr. Fraser, and you are tired. I'll sleep on the train. I like trains. Evil, evil, it's evil. It's easy to sleep rock by the sound of the wheels. Oh no, get him! He likes trains, oh, he's immediately the murderer. Lost. Well, women seem to like him. I think Megan will take care of him. Oh, I remember. Did you order the product I needed? Yes, we'll be receiving it tomorrow. Bien, it is late. And ask Miss Gray to come tomorrow morning. I have a few questions I wish to ask her. Who was the main you with? I think that there was no one with you. <laughs> Could you hush? Mademoiselle, I asked you here in order to answer a very important question. Online. Am I right in thinking you said that you did not speak to anyone on the day Sir Carmichael was murdered? It's the absolute truth. Yet, wow. Lady Clark maintained that she saw you talking to a stranger on the front doorstep. Really? She must have been mistaken. Oh, I remember now. I'd forgotten all about it, but it wasn't important. It was just a salesman. One of those traders who sell stockings from door to door. Can you describe him to me? Medium size, mm, glasses, dark suit, and a felt hat. Not the sort of man you notice. Completely harmless. That's why I forgot all about him. Nothing else? He was very hesitant and shy. Usually, door to door salesmen are very confident, but he wasn't. <laughs> Unfortunately. That seems... You did not leave Cheston willingly, I believe. I don't wish to lie. Lady Clark did not appreciate my presence. And Franklin... ...cannot go against the wishes of a sick lady. He is a good man. And he worries a great deal about his sister-in-law. I noticed that you left some personal belongings behind at Cheston. It was too risky for you to keep these objects, am I correct? 
Risky? What was the risk? Sorry. Keeping the brooch might have brought the curse of the dragon on you. What? The curse of the dragon? It's a good subject for a story. Mr. Poro, what sort of world do you live in? Yeah. I must ask you one last question. Please reply frankly with either yes or no. If Lady Clark had died, would you have agreed to marry Sir Carmichael if he'd ask you? How dare you ask such a question? Hey, answer the question. Sir Carmichael treated me just like his daughter. And all that I ever felt him was affection and gratitude, nothing else. Thank you, mademoiselle. I will not keep you any longer. I met Thora Gray on the stairs. Her cheeks were ablaze, and she appeared to be deeply hurt. Poirot, have you offended the poor girl again? Do you have good reasons for accusing her? Mm-hmm. I accuse her of nothing, Hastings. I simply asked her an important question she did not answer. Let us see if we can answer it for her. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. Little gray cells to work. What do I merit? To mirror, it's only one. You must know how to read between the lines, Hastings. When Sir Carmichael refers to paternal affection, he's lying to himself. Read this engraving on the brooch. A dark dragon for an angel with glossy hair. These are the words of a lover, not a father. Lady Clark was not wrong. What if Sir Carmichael had fallen in love with his secretary? That doesn't mean that she forced him to do so. True, there are extenuating circumstances. She is a penniless orphan. But she is calculating. Just look how she avoided it when asked if she would have married Clark. I see. You think she seduced Sir Carmichael for her own gain, and that now she is doing the same with his brother. Praro, your world is a very dark place. Mm -hmm. Do not get carried away, mon ami. We have another more important matter to settle. Really? Yes. Would you believe that Miss Grey taught me something new? Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Wait. <gasps> oh, that's suspicious. That'll eventually work. Before each murder the victim or someone close to them, it's perfectly clear. Hastings, perfectly clear. Indeed, a stalking seller visited Andover, Bexhill, and Churston on the day of each murder. We have our suspect. This should be of interest, Job. We are looking for a stocking salesman. I see you have a suspect. Yes. Contact all the stocking wholesalers who may employ him. Your suspect is a salesman? No, he does not take orders. He sells door to door. Right. The hunt is on. Either door to door stocking salesman. Are you leaving, Mr. Cust? Cust? Yes, I'm going to Cheltenham. Wait. You shouldn't travel today. 
You don't look very well. I have to. I... I have engagements. I must respect them. Oh, good grief. Oh, no. He's going to sell more stockings. He's going to sell more stockings, that's for sure. Get the post, Hastings. And why don't you go and get it yourself? Fair enough. Très bien. What's going on? I've never known Hastings to be so disagreeable. Sorry for you. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. We've a long way to go still. Typery? No, that comes later. Letter T. The next little incident will take place in Doncaster on September 11th. So long. ABC. I should compare this letter with the one on my desk which I received earlier to see if it does indeed come from the same person. Examine this <laughs> certain characters. In <laughs> yes, this eye is right. Let us come. Yes, the eye character. I have to find some. Obviously, the common W error. Hmm, it doubled. Right, let. Uh, of course, the W characters in the two. I have to find some. Yes, the. Right. Let us go. That's right. The My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Hey, Stings. Strikes tomorrow. Chief Inspector Jap? He's on another line. Can I take a message? Yes, please, mademoiselle. It is from Hercule Poirot. Tell him ABC strikes tomorrow in Doncaster. He must call me back. Very well, sir. Bien. Now I'm going to see what I can find from these current documents. I've received the product I need. Hastings, if you do not mind, I would like you to take a few notes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Finished with this subject. There. Now, down to work. <laughs> All of this needs putting in order a little. Oh, God. You're insane. Oh no. Oh no.
Why won't this thing move? That looks like it might fit. If that doesn't fit, then how about this? I hate this so much. Oh. Well, that helped. Yeah, it's not the right shape at all. But this, this is. Age is child's play. Sometimes it just doesn't move. Sometimes it just don't move. I think that this is right. Aha! This page is finished. That's done. Three more to go. Like I might fit. This piece should be placed here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one looks a little bit more complicated. Complicated. <laughs> oh, that was such a joke. So what am I supposed to do here? Like that. <laughs> and bingo bad do 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 do. This page is finished. <coughs> the second one's done. And that's two done. Yeah, it really is. This piece should be placed here. This page will be reconstructed. That goes there. I this goes that there. And Alakazam, Alakazoo, this goes here. I said this goes here. Oh, good grief. Pick it up. Pardon? I beg your pardon? This page there is finished. Go. Only one more. Keep going.
I thought this would be a lot more difficult. All the pages have reconstructed. A bottle of solvent. The cloth is now soaked with soap. Got it. Make a note, Hastings. Make a note. Mrs. Ali Sasha, Sharpona in Andover. Tracatis, Optesis, prescribed Laudanum. I got it. Look. Poirot, where on earth did you find these files? On a fire at the bottom of the garden at Comside. All right, but where did the person who burned them find them? In Hendover. Tracheitis, hemoptysis, chronic cough with loss of blood. Prescribed laudanum based cough medicine. Betty Barnard, waitress in Betsy. Chronic bronchitis, causing dysphonia. Advised to stop smoking. Alexander Bonaparte Cast. While wounded, mustard gas and head trauma. ABC. Hemoptysis, coughing fits with blood, suffers from absences and amnesia. Dick Dudley Dunbar, owner of the Black Swan Hotel in Doncaster, asthmatic, heart disease, heart condition. Here's asthma. Let us now try and get our brand. The documents came from Dr. Clark's patient records. The burned documents are with records and without a doubt they come from Clark's archives. First of all, because all the patients have thought conditions. And secondly, their name starts with either A, B, C or D. And it is precisely the files that match these letters that have been tampered with. But why burn these files? How come the names <coughs> of the two victims appear on them? And who are the two other patients? These are very good questions. Hello, Poirot? Any news, Chief Inspector? You wanted a stocking, sir? We have one. Reported by his landlady who thought he was behaving suspiciously. He has the most unbelievable name. What? <laughs> Obviously. Alexander Bonaparte Cust. Yes. Alexander Bonaparte Cust? How did you guess? Poro? Ha! He found him. Magical powers. It's a serious lead. I called Doncaster. A person matching Cust's description has been seen at the station. He got off the train from London, but after that, nobody knows where he I went. I know. Look for him at the Black Swan Hotel. What? How do you know he's there? Trust me, Chief Inspector. You appear to be very sure of yourself. Mm -hmm. Very well. I'll call the Black Swan straight away. The owner is going to get a shock when he learns that there's a murderer under his roof. What? Do your best, Jack. You can count on me. Hastings, everything is at stake. With a little luck, our main suspect will soon be under lock and key. So, has Cast been arrested? Yes. The Doncaster police are sending him by train. That is good news. But why so gloomy, Chief Inspector? 
Well, when I told the hotel owner that he was sheltering a murderer, he collapsed. He's dead? No, fortunately, but it has taken its toll on him. It has to be said that with his name starting with the letter D, he had every reason to fear Cust. I bet he was going to be the next victim. Chief Inspector, I believe that I share responsibility for this incident. What do you mean? I saw Mr. Donbar's medical records. His heart was weak. I should have warned you. It's very honest of you to tell me that, Poirot. I appreciate your gesture. Please keep me informed of his progress. You can count on me. I'll do what's needed. I will visit him at his bedside when the killer is caught. That's typical of you, Poirot. We should focus on the next part of the investigation in order to avoid other incidents. While we're waiting to question Cust, we could search his room in London. Where does he live? The Marbury Guest House. I'll see you there. Yes, but stop. Well, well, well. First of all, we have to sort out a few <laughs> we details for Cust's transfer. I understand. A bientot. <laughs> Three killer to try to get the progress. fourth, but it was too late. Let's go and search the room of our number one suspect. With pleasure. I did have a dentist appointment, but I'll cancel. The dentist. So that is why you are so nervous and bad-tempered. A visit to the dentist is never an enjoyable prospect. Mm -hmm. Not an unavoidable one. Go to your appointment, Hastings. I will manage on my own. To Marbury Guest House, please. So I'm finally take a look at the killer now that he killer's beautiful apartment. coming Madame, you may be of valuable help to me it would be my pleasure to help you will there be some journalists there as well I think you might even be interviewed you are key witness I've suspected him for some time but he appeared so harmless Oh yes, sometimes he got angry and waved his arms about. But even then, he wasn't frightening. And he was as gentle as a lamb again immediately afterwards. It was only this morning that I understood. He told me he was going to Cheltenham. But my daughter saw him at Euston Station. It's not the right station. To get to Cheltenham, you have to take the train from Paddington. And what's more, Mr. Cuss left behind an ABC with Duncaster underlined. As you can imagine, when I saw that, I called Scotland Yard. Wait, how did you know? One moment, please. How did you know that Cast had underlined Duncaster in his railway guide? I... I went and had a look in his room. I see. Do you make a habit of searching through your lodger's belongings? Well, what are you going to do later? I bet you're going to poke yeah. his room too. You have a point. Uh, tell me, did you have any other reason to suspect Mr. Cust? He's rather queer. He talks to himself. He has a bad cough. Because of the war, he says. And then he was in Churston when that millionaire got murdered. I found his train ticket when I washed his coat. He didn't want me to wash his shirt. He washed it himself. But I did see big brown stains on it. Where were the stains on the shirt? Can't recall. Got used to travel for his work. Is that correct? Yes. Although he was on well on trains. Do you know where Kust was at the time of the murder in Andover and Bexil? On June the 21st and July the 25th? No idea. But surely you keep a register. It won't do you much good. Mr. Kust rents his room for the year. If he goes away for a few days, I have no reason to make a note of it. 
remember one thing. Bexer's by the sea, right? Mm -hmm. Indeed. It is a large seaside resort. Well, as it happens, at the start of July, Mr. Cast asked me to repair his bathing dress. Suspicious, huh? Very interesting. Please continue. I also forgot to say that he started buying newspapers that talked about the case. When did he start buying the newspapers? Let's see. I think it was just after the millionaire's murder in Churston. He didn't seem all that interested before that. That will be all for now. I'm going to take a look at his room. Take the key on the counter. Sweet. I should check the register. I don't think my register will help you. Mr. Cuss rents his room all year. If he goes away for a few days... The truth is becoming apparent, and I have something to say to Mrs. Marbury. You fool! You liar! You lie, lie, lying, lie, you lying liar. Mrs. Marbury, if I am to believe the register, you rented room 306 to a certain Mr. Fishman on the day of the Bexil murder? Room 306 is Cust's room. Can you explain yourself? If I did, it was because Mr. Cust wasn't here. What about it? Understand. Doesn't matter, provided that you remember to change the sheets. Of course I changed them. I keep a nice clean establishment. I'll have you know. Right. Laudanum Cameron's Chemists. Laudanum, a medicine for coughs. It is what Dr. Clark prescribed for Mrs. Asher. This subject would probably be useful to me. <coughs> a sedative. Diethyl barbituric acid. Johnson Company. I know this medicine. It is a powerful sedative. This subject would probably be useful to me. There's no other way you'd have figured that out. Not the giant letters that say sedative. Weapon. This subject would probably be useful to me. Cast knife. John Milligan, managing director, Silky Legs, Frederick Street, Leicester. To A. B. Cast, Marbury's Guest House, 1935, May the 21st. Dear sir, further to our letters dated 5th and 10th of the month, we confirm we are you as door-to-door -door salesman, according to the conditions stated in our previous letters. We will send you the articles by mail, and also a Redfield typewriter you will be using for every business letter. Every business letter? <laughs> Regarding the schedule of your rounds, please do as following. June 21, Andover. Arrive by train the 20th in the evening and get a room at Station Hotel. Start your turn in the north part of the town. This letter establishes that Cust went to Endover, but the ink has hidden the destinations of his other trips. 
I know from Mrs. Marbury that he went to Churston. I just have to show that he went to Bexhill, and I will have proof that he was present at all the crime scenes. We'll find that out eventually. I have to get the ribbon. How am I going to do it? <laughs> this thing doesn't even look that complicated, but it's probably going to be a, a giant nightmare to fi figure out. The ribbon is jammed. I have to start by freeing it. The first thing we do, I'm guessing, is the right hand heel has been removed. Something is blocking the Now time to take off this side. The left hand heel has been removed. Is something still blocking it? Nope. And here is the ribbon. Let us see if it was indeed used to write the letters sent by ABC. Poor Portiel the Turtle. I only need the ink ribbon for my inquiry. I will let Jack clean the keyboard if he wishes. Um, poor Mr. Powell. All the letters announcing the murders were written on Cust's typewriter. It's an ABC. What the? I finished with it. Wait, what's this? Did Cust drop it when he opened the window? Or was it Mrs. Marbury while she was cleaning? Cust is parsimonious. He keeps his pencils and sharpens them until there is nothing left. It is clear that he did not grow up in luxury. He has to have some reason for doing this. How hopeful. This place is a real mess. Um. The least we can say that Mr. Cust is not very concerned about order and balance. Closet. Trousers, white shirts, everything has been washed very well. The Bexhill Daily Paper, dated from the day of the Bexhill murder. Most probably the bassing dress repaired by Mrs. Marbury's expert hands. All the main articles referring to the ABC case are here. From the Churston murder onwards. Nothing before that date. <laughs> ABC guys. Enough to sign about a dozen murders. Let's look at ourselves in the mirror. That's important. Bridge Custom Room.
He was on the killer's hit list. He no longer. He's he's finally safe from. ABC guys, enough to sign about a dozen murders. And then another one. This knife is very useful. Who knows? Maybe it never cut anything other than string. Stockings. Stockings. Ha! Ah. What's this? Wow, Something of 1914, oh. 1918. By the king's order, the name of Corporal A.B. Cust, Devonshire Regiment, was published on the London Gazette on May the 10th, 1918, as mentioned in the Dispatch for Gallant and Distinguished Service. Cool. An army. De That. This dark stain. It could be blood, but goodness knows how long it has been there. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Well, where was Cust at the time of the Bexhill murder? Cust was, pr was probably in Buffalo. Back saw the day of the murder. The register shows that Cust did not sleep at the guest house on the day of the murder. Where was he? Bexhill. The Bexhill paper reveals it. Cust bought this newspaper in Bexhill on July the 25th. Correct. No use continuing the inspection of this room. I've seen all there is to see. He expected that he would have been able to get away with this one as Good well, but we figured it out. Thank you for your help. I look forward to seeing you again, Mr. Poirot. Ah, Chief Inspector. I was about to leave. Good evening, Chief Inspector. Welcome. Please excuse me, I must go to the kitchen. I'll leave the cube, Mr. Cust, on the counter. I'm sorry I'm late. I've spent ages with the Doncaster police. And you? I have established one fact. On three occasions, Cust was at the scene on the day of the crimes. I had best talk to Chuck. I've listened closely to what you have to say, Poirot. For me, there's no doubt Cust is guilty. Do you have any element that might prove the contrary? That is what we're going to look for. Let us well, no, try we, and get our brain cells to work. All know that he is bad. Cust is in all the town. Is there any complaint between Cust and the killer? <laughs> he could have committed these crimes. Is Cost's behavior suspicious? Guilty. The evidence against Cust is overwhelming. His presence at the scenes, the knife, the bloodstained shirt, the ABCs in a box. C'est vrai. However, the blood Mrs. Marbury saw on Cust's shirt may have been his own. According to his medical records, he suffers from hemoptysis. 
The murderer cuts a Carmichael's throat from behind, and the blood spurted outwards. You would expect the murderer's shirt to be stained on the sleeves, not on the buttonholes. Yet we see quite the opposite. You would expect the murderer to keep the newspaper articles about his crimes. But Cust's collection starts in Sheston, as if it discovered the case rather late. Hmm, I agree it's troubling, but it doesn't change my mind. There's small details that we should be able to clear up by questioning Cust. When can we talk to him? Doncaster is sending him to us on the first train. As a question you already? He says he can't remember a thing. Oh, it's sure possible. he can't. The say suffers from absences in amnesia. Mrs. Marbury has confirmed this. He may have done the murders in an altered state. A familiar oh. situation. That would be interesting. To his name. Dr. Thompson Long insisted summer. that even if you don't know what you're doing, you never commit a murder without wanting to. Très intéressant. I shall remember that. Right. I'll go and examine the suspect's room. Chief Inspector, he might have had a mental illness that caused him to have a split personality. All right, we'll that would have made him. Tomorrow. That could have made him more. He has this isolated personality and also the murderous personality. And how he wouldn't remember his thing. Alexander Cust. To Scotland Yard, please. Candelabra mustache. Finish Malbury guest house. Well, 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 who This man is not in good shape. Look who it is. He's breathing rapidly. He is worried and very tired. And other police have been hard on him. What do you want from me? Hmm. Good day, ABC. Do you know who I am? Someone who's got it in for me. I am Hercule Poirot, and I want nothing other than the truth. Ah, you're the detective. Why did you send me a letter before each crime? Why all these questions? When are you going to stop pestering me? Thank you. Oh, good God, my shirt is covered in blood again. Oh, my. Bon. I now know where the last things Mrs. Marbury so came from. Are you well enough to speak? Yes, I feel much better. Well, now it's crashed. 